The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, my name is James. Welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. On this show, we talk about the equipment found on your electronics workbench. In this episode, we are talking about something that I have shown in multiple videos in the past, but I never really explain much about, which is this electronic load. When testing a power supply, it is useful to have a variable load to test its performance. The electronic load can act like a variable resistor while using a multimeter or oscilloscope to watch how the power supply reacts. Another use for an electronic load is to exercise a battery. By drawing a constant current, the capacity of this lithium ion battery can be verified. There are other ways to use an electronic load, but I think that covers the two major uses, at least my two main uses. So let's take a look at how they work, the different measurements you can make when using one, and the difference between these three types. Here I have three different units. This one is a $50 device that I bought from eBay, while this one is from BK Precision and runs about $600, and this one is from Rota & Schwartz, which runs between two and $6,000. Now in fairness, this is a power supply and a load built into one, and it does a lot more than these other two. But each of these loads operates somewhat similar, so let's go take a look at a block diagram. You might think the core of an electronic load is a variable resistor, and in a way there is one, except it is a transistor. That transistor is connected to a shunt resistor. A control circuit measures the voltage across that resistor. With Ohm's law, the load knows how much current it is sinking. The controller changes the gate voltage of the JFET to maintain the set current. We call this mode constant current. If a voltage divider were added and measured instead of the shunt resistance, then it would be possible to maintain a constant voltage. We call this mode constant voltage. Finally, making use of both a known current and a known voltage, the load can be configured for a constant resistance. Obviously, real electronic loads are a little more complicated. For example, they may include multiple transistors in parallel and they probably include a microcontroller to control their output but this diagram is their basic structure. So let's address a question that I get asked. Why not just use a resistor decade box like this one? Well, these tend to only be rated for a few watts, while this load can handle up to 30 amps. Then I get asked, why not just use a power resistor? Okay, if you just need a load of one specific value, then in some cases, one or multiple power resistors is a good option. However, electronic loads are easier to set a specific value, they handle the heat dissipation, and they enable more dynamic loads, which I think you'll see as we talk about the different types. This basic load does not have much more than the block diagram. It's a FET with a CPU heatsink being controlled by a microcontroller. It allows setting the constant current, and it has a voltage threshold. That threshold shuts off the load when the attached supply drops below it. These are meant for testing battery capacity. To test this 500 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, I set the constant current to one amp and change the threshold voltage to 2.8 volts. That voltage is convenient since you should never discharge a LiPo below that level. It took about 18 minutes to discharge this battery, but notice its capacity is only about 300 milliamp hours. Overall, these are limited to testing a battery's discharge capacity, but if you're clever, you can sort of use it as a constant load. Next, let's look at this tool, which is a bit more flexible. The next step up is an adjustable load with multiple modes like the BK8540. It has modes for constant voltage, current, and resistance. One thing this particular model lacks is programmability it can only be adjusted using the front panel. These are really meant for production environments, but I still do recommend them for either a hobby workbench or in a professional lab as an alternative to a more expensive instrument. 
One thing I do not like about this unit is that it is very, very loud. One day, I really need to change the fan. For now, let's look at the different modes you'll find in most electronic loads. Constant current is most useful for discharging or testing a battery. Here's a chance for me to show you how terrible these 9 volt batteries actually are. At 50 milliamps, the battery is putting out 9.2 volts. Okay. At 100 milliamps, the battery's voltage has already dropped below 9 volts to 8.9. And moving up to, say, 500 milliamps, the voltage drops all the way down to 7 volts. And now, for something dangerous, I go up to 1 amp, which results in a pitiful voltage of 5.4. I picked 50 milliamps first on purpose because that is how much current an Arduino Uno draws by itself. If you need to add sensors or motors to an Arduino, then these batteries become a terrible choice. Okay, let's move on. Constant voltage mode causes the load to adjust the current so that a set voltage is maintained. Such a mode is useful for testing a charging circuit like this USB micro lithium polymer charger. I have set the load to a constant 3.8 volts. The circuit thinks it is charging a battery, so it outputs 433 milliamps. The load's meters are displaying watts instead of amps. So instead of doing the math each time, we can take advantage of the fact that the charger circuit is efficient enough that we can just use the supply currents meter to get an idea of how much the load is sinking. Here is a good example of where an adjustable load is useful. I can change the voltage to say 4.2 volts and see the charger stop. Or I can drop it down to 2.8 volts and see the current drop significantly. And after that, the LiPo charger just stops charging the battery. Or battery. The charger circuit is correctly changing output current based on our simulated LiPo battery voltages. To explain constant resistance, I am using this 12 volt power supply brick that is rated for 5 amps. On the load, I switch it to constant resistance mode and increase its current capability. With a 10 ohm load, the supply outputs about 1.2 amps according to the current meter. Even though this mode is called constant, I can change the resistance to something like 5 ohms. And that causes the current to double to about 2.4 amps. With a 2 ohm load, the supply is driving harder than it's specified. And we can see that on the oscilloscope, its ripple voltage has gotten progressively worse. With this instrument, the value can only change by using the front panel. So, for the final comparison, we'll step up to a load that has fully programmable outputs. Earlier, I mentioned this NGM202 unit does more than just act as an electronic load. Either of its channels can source or sync current, so it is both a power supply and a load. When acting as a load, it can be programmed to change its resistance. I wrote a short Python program that cycles the resistance through several values. It runs on a PC and controls the instrument remotely. It simulates a device that has different power modes. By the way, you can see this code in the show notes. The supply under test is the 12 volt brick from before. Looking at the load screen, you can see that it's pretty busy and kind of a mess to look at. So let's look at what's going on with an oscilloscope. The purple waveform is the current. You can see how it changes when the load's resistance changes. But take a look at the green waveform as well, it's the voltage. When the current changes, the supply's output voltage changes too. The goal for a good supply design is to minimize this ripple. This high-end unit has one more interesting feature. As a supply, it can simulate being a battery. Here I've set it up as a 50 milliamp hour lithium ion. I'm using the cheap battery tester from before to draw one amp from it. At 1 amp, it takes about 3 minutes to deplete the virtual battery. So if you're developing a battery-powered product, a simulator like this one can help you measure how long something like an IoT device will last with various battery types and sizes. If you're measuring power supply designs, then you can use this because it's a supply for the input and a load for the output. Electronic loads give you flexibility to test power supplies and characterize batteries. 
Options range from this low-end battery tester to a mid-range adjustable load up to a fully loaded source and sync tool that has cool capabilities like remote programming and battery simulations. Now that you've seen different types of electronic loads, how they work, and how to use them, let me know over on Element 14 if you have questions about them. Remember that over there you'll find show notes for this episode, which include a bunch of links I put together on electronic loads. By the way, that really is the best place to ask me questions because I'm more likely to see them there. Thank you for watching another Workbench Wednesdays episode. For now, it is time for me to get back to loading circuits electronically on my electronics workbench.